What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan, and on this planet we send it. And we're going to be getting in today. Well, I thought I was heading out to Pinion Canyon today. We want to double check. It's actually tomorrow. So I figured I'm seeing some things in the garden that normally I can't really highlight because it's in the morning when I kind of see these colors and contrast. So I want to do a garden vlog for you guys. In addition, there are some new things that I also want to point out in addition to seeing the garden literally in a different light. All right, I got a plan in place. Let's go ahead and send it. Now I'll be pointing this out as we go around, but one of the things that the morning sunlight or basically the indirect sunlight for the sun's actually beaming in on the garden is it highlights the new growth. Now it's not really easy to tell when the whole bush is completely new growth, but when you look over here, you can definitely see a difference of the dark to the light and the lighter one being the new growth. So that's what you're able to see. It, it seems, it almost gives an appearance that it's glowing and there's not much going on here because it's not that big of a bush. When we get to like some of the trees, you'll see what I mean here in a second. Let's come on in and take a look at the hungry bin. Hunger bin still holding it down. Looks like we actually need to put some more food in there. And let's take a look at the strawberries are still coming in. Every time I come over to this section, I do this garden up. It's like, oh, I still haven't brought that in yet. So definitely need to bring the keg in too. But all the strawberries are actually, we're, we got a good group coming in here pretty fast as I just take you about and show you all the flowers that are already starting to turn into, it's already starting to turn into strawberries. A lot of this section is continuing to bolt uh, the arugula and as a matter of fact the celery in the back is uh, you know like the celery actually in the back is doing really well. Let's go ahead and take a step over here to the side again and take a look at the bees up there. Um, although I will say the light is good for one thing it's probably not going to be good to see the bees here so let's go ahead and go in. All right, now, one thing that I'm going to highlight is, besides it's a little bit bigger, the, the nest there is just a little bit bigger, um, I will say that we are starting to see the bees in the yard. So far, not aggressive. As a matter of fact, for those that watch my Jeep video, there was a bee actually hanging out with me on my LJ um, when I was doing some of the wire wrapping, and it wasn't bothering me at all. The hops are really doing good again this year, and uh, the kale that I planted is all seems to be coming up and at least not being affected too much by the critters, but the hops is really like already, we're having to start winding it down. So let's go ahead and come on down here. Uh, the peas or the beans or whatever are doing good. They're kind of gripped onto the back and they're starting to make this trend. Oh, I missed this last year. Let's go ahead and let that one go. Uh, let's see here. It's actually, that's a papaya tree that probably came from the seeds within our fertilizer, i.e. our compost. I'm going to have to pull that, kill that, and maybe give it to someone, if not kill it. I mean, now let's see how the tomatoes are doing. Not seeing any tomatoes turn, any flowers turn into tomatoes yet, but I we have been seeing the bees in the yard. So they're out here. They're becoming familiar with uh, their home environment and hopefully will, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they're not quite open yet. Like I think that's the furthest one and that might not be open enough. But hopefully once they do open nice and wide that the bees come and immediately identify and go in for easy pollen and then in turn pollinate my tomatoes. Let's take a look at whatever this is. I forget what type of vegetable this is and it looks like the oh, hold on what's down there that is a that is a fava bean okay that's what that's what this is growing and it looks like it's do it's growing very healthy we'll cover most of this section right here at this range because it's the best place to kind of highlight some of the things that i was talking about earlier look at the difference compared to this semi-dwarf tree here in the center the dark leaves on the bottom, which is last year's growth, compared to all the new light green on top, which is this year's growth. And then take that and you can transfer it over to and look at the new growth that's coming out on the plum side. And we're even starting to get some growth coming out on the peach side too. And it looks like the peach blossoms are about to come out on the dual grafted tree. But still in the morning, you can just see how much more vibrant the peach blossoms are when the sun it, the sunlight the direct sunlight isn't necessarily blocking it out let's go ahead and take a quick walk in here and see how the other semi-dwarf tree is well we still are getting some new growth here and it looks like it's 
got some insects on there that are taking fond of it, but uh, it's growing. And, and and that's real pleasing to see because as many of you know who've been with me for a while, I've been concerned about not seeing any growth on my citruses because I've had bad experiences in the past, but it looks like they are now putting my concerns to rest. Now here on the persimmons tree, starting to get what appears to be some suckers down there. And to be honest, I'm debating on keeping those down there just because the tree from where I'm the desired growth is not necessarily filling out the way I would want it. It's very, you know, sparse. And I don't know if that's just common to persimmons, but it's getting some flowers up there. And so I'm, I'm going to let it go to fruit. So I, I, I'm debating on just leaving the leaves, you know, come in even on the suckers. So that way the tree is getting nutrition. I'm leaning towards, you know, remaining sucker free as I always try to be in the garden, but, uh, you know, we'll see. And we'll just jump over here real fast to the a peach correction to the Mexican lime tree. These flowers are just already been, it looks like they've been pollinated. Quite a few of them have been, and we are going to get another, probably even bigger harvest on the lime trees. And I'm easily able to identify the new growth just by the way that the color is lighter towards the top in this type of lighting. And as a matter of fact, looks like Yep, this, this one was falling and just hanging there, so this one's ready. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great harvest on the limes. And the fig trees are coming. These, these fig trees are like a force not to reckon with. And, and I'm pretty excited because this small one really looks like it's going to be taken off this year. I'm not worried about if it produces any figs this year. I would just like to start seeing that first branch become, you know, a major trunk for the rest of the branches to start sprouting out at, similar to this thing. Because, I mean, just check it out. As I highlighted on the last one, you know, we were getting fruiting already at the tip of the, the initial fruiting. And sometimes, you know, I wouldn't get that initial fruiting, but that's just a good sign of the tree is doing healthy and the nutrition is being provided in addition to all the new leaves that are now coming in around the entire tree. And it's almost a little, It's a, it, we're getting close to being almost too late to be able to identify the differences here, but it's still able to see it here in this indirect light. You can see the darker green here, but then look at the lighter green highlighting all the top parts. And let me just kind of give you guys different perspectives here so you can see the different branches that are coming out. I mean, it's just really something that I take a look at and I'm happy to see in the mornings when that indirect light is hitting. It just shows me in springtime, it just shows me how well the garden is doing. And it really does give me a lot of excitement to see what fruit production we're going to be getting later after spring. Big Bertha even. Take a look at the top. Let's see how, the, uh, don't know how well that's just showing up with this lighting, but you can even see some of the new growth coming in at the very tops of some of these branches. You can you can see some of the older ones. They look like it's kind of going through, you know, a typical deciduous forest run, but uh, there are some light green ones coming in at the top. So it's about time for me to go ahead and do my one hack. It's going to be a pretty big hack, and I'll bring you guys along with that. But let's go ahead and jump over here to the pomegranate. Uh, last time I saw you guys, I only had one flower. Now I've got a lot of flowering coming in all here along some of the edges. We got some more here. We got definitely some ones back there that just sprang up and grew quick. And so this is why with the bees here, I just really think that it's gonna be a great year for fruit production. You know, bar, like I said, barring anything that they don't do anything aggressive and we have to get rid of them. That would be unfortunate. The ashwagandha bush is both, I mean, it's just another one to see both the old growth and the new growth. You can see the darker growth and then that lighter growth. I mean, it's just another great example on kind of how the garden glows in that indirect sunlight. And we'll go ahead and just hop on down here to the baby avocado. Still concerned. I mean, just look at all the new growth that came in here at the top. It's just about shriveled away. Still got some, you know, leaves coming in here, you know, holding, holding it down for the whole tree here. Not that it's that big, but still, like, I would really like to see, to feel a little bit more comfortable, additional leaves come in and then just start taking over as far as the main photosynthesis producers. And I almost walked right by the elderberry tree. Well, we got someone who wants to survive. We got a growth there. Not sure if that's focusing quite yet. Got a growth there. And we got some growth over there. 
and we even got some growth there. So it's putting the hormones out and starting to grow. As a matter of fact, it looks like we even got something coming in right there. So it wants to survive. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it its third chance here, and you know maybe it'll be three time, three strikes are out, or maybe we'll start getting some, you know, harvestable, easily harvestable elderberries. And the papaya tree. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a picture here, but we actually had our first harvest of the papaya. It sort of self-harvested. The biggest one fell down finally. So now we are left with all that is up here. You can kind of see I've been cleaning up and just kind of eat. When these things are get to this dead, you just barely touch them and they come come off completely. And I noticed on some of them, you'll see like there's a papaya down there. I noticed they're kind of like. Some of the papaya are tied on to those, so I don't want to touch it. Um, like some of this ones, I feel like taking that one off might remove those three papayas right there. Um, but, you know, we, we, I'm seeing at least the, the only thing positive right now, and like I said, I would really like to see these leaves starting to look a lot better. At least we got some new. <coughs> <coughs> at least we got some new leaves coming in down there from below. And here we are with the navel orange tree. Lots of flowering coming in. And let's just see here. I, I think uh, I am seeing some of them sort of transition to... You can see that one there starting to transition already. So it looks like all of the... Or, or the majority of these have been pollinated. So hopefully that's a sign of the bees being here. Um, but again, like I said in the last video, not all of them are going to fruit. I will probably be down on a tree this size. I feel like if I get, if, if fruit make it all the way to the end of production, it might be like two or three, maybe even one. I would be surprised if we get over five. And the little engine that could. Not really seeing anything new here, to be honest. Um, actually, no, that, that, that definitely appears to be new. And this over here appears to be new. So it is doing something. It appears that all of it is down low. I'm not sure if that's new or not. So it appears everything is down low. But I, I imagine the more we get steadier, warm temperature, the better this thing will start just growing and sprouting like it normally does now. All right, this is one part I'm just going to have to send it and hope for the best because I don't know how well it's showing up on your guys' screen. On my phone, it's not looking too great as far as the contrast. But we're starting to get some grapes coming in on the grapevine. So we'll go ahead and do our normal slow walk here just to kind of check on things. But the grapevine is coming back pretty nice. You can see some of the sprouts back there are getting pretty high. And we are, especially here towards the main part of the trunk, are getting... Grapes coming up in dense amount already, even on the new on the new branch that I'm deciding to sort of test out and see how that's going. But let's let's go ahead and come on down and see how much further this test branch. I mean, this uh, yeah, this test branch is coming to see how much new growth is coming in on it. Um, I think I am already. I think I've already passed where the new growth is. I've got growth there. And I'll try to keep an eye out for any others, but the main branch, as you can see, coming in very dense. And I still got still got grapes coming there, have grapes coming up there on the old one, grapes all the way down here so far, grapes down here so far, and grapes, I mean, heck, there's grapes right up. There's even grapes on the furthest one right there. Let's see if we got any additional growth here towards the tip yet. Nope, not yet. So still looks like the old vine is the contender for the winner, but uh, like I said, we'll see. I'm going to give them each a fair shot, but so far the old one, the one with the experience, is holding true. All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I just wanted to take you guys along for what I find to be a morning treat, seeing the garden in, an in the indirect sunlight in the morning. And although this isn't doesn't replicate it 100%, it's pretty close. So as soon as I saw the opportunity to go ahead and show you guys, I wanted to take you guys along for something that I enjoy every morning. Now, I will say that I'm probably going to get this video, since I'm going into the Jeep video, I'm probably going to get this out to you guys uh, later in the week. Uh, correction. Monday or Tuesday and then for those of you who watch my Jeep videos I'll have that uh, that trail rated trail video out by the end of the week but anyways thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one